Hi, my name is Kymen Savage. I'm doing biology A level, and today we're going to be going over anaerobic respiration in mammals and yeast, which is super fun. And by the end of the video, you should be able to explain why anaerobic respiration provides a much lower yield of ATP than aerobic. And you should also be able to compare and contrast aerobic resp anaerobic respiration in mammals and yeast. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. I'm still under the weather, but I'm getting better. So, start off with. Respiration, you think, oh, it's got to happen with oxygen, right? No. What happens if there's no oxygen? Well, we've seen that oxygen acts as the final electron acceptor in an oxidative phosphorylation. If you don't know what oxidative phosphorylation is, go back and watch my last video. I uploaded it like an hour and a half ago. Of course, that doesn't make any sense if you're watching it anyway. But um, go back and watch it and it will make sense. Well, if oxygen then for is absent, the electron transport chain can't function, obviously. It hasn't got its final electron acceptor, so how can it function? So the Krebs cycle and the link reaction also stop. This leaves only the anaerobic process of glycolysis as a source of ATP. That's not that great. The reduced NAD generated during the oxidation of glucose has to therefore be reoxidized so glycolysis can keep operating. And this increases the chances of the organism surviving under temporary adverse conditions. So, great. So no oxygen, not that great, but still. But for eukaryote cells, there are two pathways to reoxidize NAD. Fungi, such as yeast, use ethanol, alcohol, um, fermentation, um, plus also plant cells, like root cells, in really waterlogged conditions when they can't get it, can also use this pathway if they can't, if it's like really waterlogged, they can't like, get anything else. Um, and animals use lactate fermentation. But neither of these pathways produce any ATP, but two molecules of ATP per molecule of glucose are made by substrate level phosphorylation during glycolysis. Um, and glycolysis produces two molecules of ATP, two molecules of reduced NAD, and two molecules of pyruvate per molecule of glucose. So we're going to start off with lactate fermentation, which is what animals use. Lactate fermentation involves in mammalian muscle tissue um, during like really vigorous activities, such as when you're running... It says running to escape a predator, but if we're talking about like humans and stuff, we don't run to escape predators that much. I don't know, maybe running to catch the bus because you have to get into town because your special cinema showing is on at that time. You have to be in there to meet your friends, otherwise they're all going to get annoyed. Um, so, yeah. So, lactate fermentation occurs in mammalian muscle tissue during vigorous activity when the demand for ATP is high and there's oxygen deficient. Um, deficit. Deficient? Deficit? I mean the same words. Yeah. First of all, reduced NAD must be reoxidized to NAD+. Plus. And pyruvate is the hydrogen acceptor. Now, pyruvate accepts these hydrogen atoms from reduced NAD. So, therefore, NAD is now reoxidized and available to accept more hydrogen atoms from glucose. Great! That means glycolysis can continue, and this generates enough ATP to sustain muscle contraction. Um, the enzyme lactate dehydrogenase catalyzes the oxidation of reduced NAD together with the reduction of pyruvate to lactate. Great! I mean, so we can, it works again. The lactate is carried away in the blood from muscle to the liver. And when more oxygen is available, the lactate can be converted back to pyruvate, which can then enter the Krebs cycle via the link reaction. And it also may be recycled to glucose and glycogen. Um, it's not um, It's not like a build-up of lactate that causes mat uh, muscle fat uh, fatigue. Um, but it's actually the reduction in pH that will reduce enzyme activity in the muscles. It's great, that was lactate fermentation. Super. See, it's not actually that hard. It's, um, the anaerobic respiration isn't as bad as you think. So we know about mammalian muscle tissue, but what about in yeast cells? We did yeast cells um, in A2, no, AS level biology, uh, and stuff like mitosis and stuff. Yeah, we did it in then. So we're coming back to revisit the yeast cells. Now, under anaerobic conditions in yeast cells, each pyruvate molecule mu loses a carbon dioxide molecule. It's therefore decarboxylated and becomes ethanol. Okay, do you hear the difference between ethanol, ethanol? Ethanol's got an A. 
Um, this reaction is catalyzed by the enzyme pyruvate decarboxylase. Um, this isn't in animals, that's why it's just in yeast, um, which has a coenzyme bound to it. Ethanol, ethanol accepts hydrogen atoms from reduced NAD, which becomes reoxidized as ethanol is reduced to ethanol. This is catalyzed by ethanol dehydrogenase. So, pyruvate to ethanol to ethanol. Okay? The reoxidized NAD can now accept more hydrogen atoms from glucose during glycolysis. Now, yeast is a, f a facultative anaerobe. That means it can live without oxygen, although it's killed when the concentration of ethanol builds up to about, I think, about 15%. However, the rate of growth is faster under aerobic conditions, um, and at the beginning of the brewing process, yeast is grown under aerobic conditions and then placed in anaerobic conditions to undergo alcohol fermentation. So that's great. That's basically anaerobic respiration in mammals and yeast. Fantastic. If you want some questions, you could say, why can't mammalian tissue carry out alcoholic fermentation of pyruvate under um, anaerobic conditions? Uh, conditions. You could also explain how a buildup of acid during glycolysis leads to muscle fatigue in mammals. And finally, suggest how diving mammals such as seals, whales, and dolphins can swim below water without suffering muscle fatigue. That was a really good one to do. Um, I've noticed in quite a few past papers they brought up like underwater animals and stuff to do with them. Like there was one about seals. Um, so yeah, try and the suggest questions are the hardest, but just try and apply your knowledge. And you should get through them fine. I'm um, sorry I've been talking really fast in these videos. It's just my uploadingness is going crazy at the moment, and it's not letting me upload all videos. So I'm like, the quicker I do the videos, the more chance I've got to upload them. Just rewatch it if you get confused. <laughs>